Hey guys, welcome back. So we're going to introduce vectors now. We're going to go into what is behind vector graphics and how and why we would use vector graphics over pixelated or rasterized images. So up until this point, we've largely been using Photoshop as a um, photo manipulation editing software. We've been basically just changing and adding and subtracting and working with layer masks and clipping masks, which we're still going to do this week. We're still going to be working with clipping masks, but I wanted to switch gears a little bit and introduce vectors and kind of go over what these are. So a vector image is one that's different than a rasterized image is that it is not based on pixels. So a vector image is a resolution independent image, right, that you can scale super small or really large and you're not going to lose any image quality because again the information there is not one based off of pixels. So what do I mean by this? So if you think about your text for example, what are vectors here? So anytime you have text and you write anything out, let's just hit OK, if I go to change that, right, Command T, and I go to scale this larger or smaller, right, we see that the text still stays nice and clean and crisp and it's there's there's no degradation in the quality or blurriness or anything like that so think of vectors as similar to what we're doing here with text okay and let me show you a little bit more about this here so I'm gonna come to my custom shape tool and I'm going to just pick black here and you'll notice in this drop down menu you have shape pass and pixels now the next video will go over this but let's just pick pixels for now so this is going to be a shape that is made up of pixels okay and I'll just come to my custom shapes and there's all these shapes here but I'm just going to choose the one that I was already on so I'm going to go ahead let me make a new layer here and I'm just going to click and drag and make this image right here, okay? So what I mean by vectors being resolution independent is that, so this shape right here that I just made is a pixel-based image, so it's a rasterized image that, let's just say the information here is 600 by 800 pixels or whatever it is. So if I go to scale this up with Command-T and if I bring this larger, right, we can see that it starts to get a bit blurry and we're losing information and that's because a rasterized image is is only um, it's as large as it's going to be like how you receive that file is how you receive that file and you can't really scale it much larger than that you can some you could go smaller generally if it's not too much or you can go a little bit bigger as long as you're not going too far in one direction, you're safe. But if you wanted to get something, for example, businesses, you know, that have a logo, if you wanted that logo to be scalable on a business card, but then you also want to put that same logo on the side of a truck, you would definitely want to use a vector based image, right? So in the case of our custom shape here, let's say it's 600 by 800 pixels. If I scale it up to 1200 by 2200 pixels, there's all that missing information in there that Photoshop is just going to try to fill in and guess what would go there. So you get oftentimes just this blurring. And if I zoom in now, you can see it's just, it's not very crisp. It's not very clean, right? If you've ever taken a kind of a low quality photo and tried to make it bigger and, and you notice that, wow, this looks really bad. Well, that's because the issue with rasterization and a pixel based image. So, there's that one there. So I'm going to create another layer and now I'm going to come back to my custom shape tool and now I'm going to come to shape. And like I said, the next video we'll go over these in more detail and we'll kind of work through them a bit. But if we come to shape now, so shape and path are both vector based. Okay. And we're going to come to shape and notice we have some options to choose from here. We have fill, you know, what color that's going to be on the inside. Stroke, just set that to the, the strike through there. We don't want a stroke. And then everything else we can keep the same. So if I go and I create this shape now, okay, we can see that if I zoom in here, it looks pretty good. And now if I hit Command T and if I go to scale this to the same size as my other rasterized image, if I click there, we can see it looks much cleaner, 
right? It doesn't have that blurring. It's much tighter. It's really crisp. And this is scalable to however large I want to go. Like I said, if I want to put this on the side of a building, oops, if I want to put this on the side of a building or shrink this down to a business card, a vector image is going to maintain its quality. So we've been somewhat introduced to this via smart objects, right? Smart objects will maintain some of this quality here. Okay, and I'll just show you the differences here between two of the same images, just so you can get a better sense of vector-based images. Let me scale this down here. So I'm going to go to, there's, a couple, there's two images here that I got off of vecteasy.com. And this first one here, this is a vector-based image. So both vectors and Rasterize images have their strengths and weaknesses too. So Photoshop, which largely deals with photographs, is really good with rasterized images because photos, uh, realistic photography, has lots of gradient and lots of texture and lots of blending. So having pixels to emphasize those details are really, really helpful. And a vector-based image is really good for visual artists and those that are working with for example, graphic design or logos, where we may not be dealing with representational photography, where we might be dealing with, instead of illustrative or imagined spaces like this, a vector, vector images is much better. Vector images are much smaller file sizes as well. So let's just take a look here. So here's the, this is the vector-based image. And if I zoom in here, we can see that it stays nice and crisp and clean. The image quality is good. Okay, that's the vector image. Now if I come to the, the JPEG, which is rasterized, if I come in here and start to zoom in, we can see all of this, right? We get some of this blurring. We get a lot of that pixelation there, right? Just to kind of show you again. If I come in, right, nice and clean. And that's the differences there between vector and rasterized images. Okay, so just a quick overview there. The next video we're going to get into actually making vector images and how to go about editing paths. And I'll talk a bit more about how we can use vector images.